Hi, this video is going to help us understand how to do multiple regression in SPSS. So we are going to go to Analyze, Regression, and Linear. Lots of options here. So our dependent variable is going to be our Y. Here, let's see if we can predict um, high school degree. And then we have our independent predictors. So we could do median household income. If we want to do a simple regression, so one predictor, then we're done. But we can add more right here. So let's do poverty, um, persons per square mile, who knows, and home ownership. So we have four different predictors, and we are trying to predict high school graduation. Under statistics, these are defaults. We're going to click descriptives. You'll notice we could do um, more detailed collinearity diagnostics. We're not going to go that in, into that in this class. We just don't have time. Plots is really important. So we're going to put the Z predicted here and the Z residual here. Z means standardized. We're going to click histogram, normal probability, and produce all partial plots. Underneath save, look at all of the other options that we have for multiple regression in SPSS. We're not going to click anything. We also want to make sure that we are on list wise. So here, if we have any missing variables or missing data, we want to not have it be included for anything in regression. For regression, we have to have all of the same information for the entire data set. Click OK. So here's our descriptives. We have the mean, standard deviation, and sample size for all of our variables. Here is a correlation table. So we're going to take a minute and we are going to look through this correlation table because it looks a little different than when we run just a correlation. All of our R values are right here. So percent high school graduates, um, we are looking at our DV and how our Y is correlated with our predictors. So just running through here, it is a moderate correlation with median household. It has a strong negative correlation with um, poverty level. It has a very weak correlation with person per square mile um, and also has a fairly weak correlation with homeowner rate. Right here, we can look in these ones for anything above a 0.7 and that's how we're going to check potential for collinearity concerns. So just scanning through, we have a pretty strong correlation between poverty and household income, which makes sense. Scanning through, that's the same one. Everything else looks pretty good. Scrolling down. This right here is just telling us how we entered the information. Here we have our model summary. So this is going to give us our R value, our R squared, and we also have a standard error of the estimate. So R, that means that we have a very strong model that's explaining just below 80% of the variance of high school graduates. Here is our ANOVA table. We'll talk more about all of those later, but F value is what we care about, and then the significance of the F test. And significance, that is our p-value. So here we have a p-value of less than 0 0.001. So we have a significant model. As a whole, it is significant. We do not know if each individual part is significant. That's our next uh, chart down. So here we have our constant. That is our intercept. That is beta 0. Scrolling over, we can see that our beta zero is significantly different than zero. So we need to include our constant. Then we're gonna scroll through here is all of our individual predictors. And we can see that household income is significant. Poverty is significant. Person per square mile is actually significant, but homeownership rate is not significant. We have more information here. This is just information on our residuals not overly concerned with that right now. Here's where we are going to test all of our assumptions. So is this normal? Are the residuals normally distributed? Here I would say, yeah, that matches pretty nicely. We don't have anything that looks really skewed one way or another. Here we have 
a little blip right here, but for the most part, all of the dots are on the line, so we're pretty happy with that one. Scrolling down, these are the same ones that we looked at in Excel, so we want everything scattered nicely throughout. This is a perfect example of something that meets the assumptions and we are very happy with it. This is as a whole, everything together. Now we're going to break it down into the partial plots. So this one is median household income. Again, scattered nicely throughout. I don't see any major patterns. We're good. This one is poverty. That is a problem. So we see a very distinct pattern going through there. So we have a violation of independence. That's a big issue. Scrolling down, person per square mile is also scattered pretty nicely. We have a couple outliers here that make it look like it kind of goes this way, but if we ignore these two, everything else is scattered nicely, so I'm not overly worried. And then home ownership rate is also scattered nicely throughout. So our assumptions are met. We have everything listed up here that we need, which is really in these three. So at this point in time, going through and running the first try of a model with these four predictors. I have three things that are concerning. First of all, there is potential for collinearity between poverty and income, and both of them are significant. So I'm going to want to play with that, maybe taking poverty out and leaving income in, which would make sense because I also have a violation of the poverty variable. Meaning, I need to either transform that data um, or remove it completely because it's problematic. I also know that home ownership is not significant, so it's not helping the model and I should remove it. So there are three different problems that I see in the first model that I get to now problem solve and play with. So much fun.